the last talk in this room, and in fact the only talk at the moment, so pretty much all of us are here, is Turtle Bots Simulated Beginnings. If you recall last year's talk, David Campy gave us an excellent kind of call to action, and we were very inspired by the end of it. I'm expecting much the same for this one. To introduce David, um, the phrase enjoy your nearing comes to mind, basically the loop of joy that he refers to. David is trying to create the world he wants to live in. He's from Afrolabs. Afrolabs we introduced as a sponsor, and I'll tell you again about them at the closing. But David's basically working on the software production value stream and engineering kindness with a capital E and a capital K at Afrolabs and volunteering to help grow coding at coderlevelup.org, which is David's real passion, I think, or one of the many real passions that David has. We've also lost our... Uh, okay, don't touch it. Okay. Um, one of the many passions David has. I don't think there's anything really more to be said. David, you're going to kind of blow us away with the turtle. So, David, take it away. Thank you. So, hello, welcome um, to those who are finding seats. Enjoy. Um, checking everyone in the back is okay. Great. So, turtle, Python, and robots. Sounds pretty amazing, right? So, I've been working on this project called TurtleBots with a goal of plugging turtle, which is batteries included in Python, in so that we can allow learners to use Python Turtle to change learning by actually being able to control robots. Today, I'm going to tell you why I'm excited about things that aren't quite turtle bots, but I'm excited about a lot of things. I'm going to not have my computer hibernate. I'm going to tell you fun facts about turtles. And then after the fun facts about turtles, we're going to do a demo. And then I am, like last year, going to invite you with something like a call to action. Um, I'm going to let this computer come back to life. I uh, no, it just uh, the battery is very dead on it. Plugged in. It is plugged in, it's but plugged sometimes in. it decides that it has zero volts on the battery. So I'm, while while that uh, decides to come back up, um, one of the main reasons I'm excited is that I'm a PyCon, right? Uh, we're here in Imflonga, in Durban. Imflonga is a Isisulu word, which if you were to translate it with the poetry of Isisulu into English, would mean the susurration of the reeds. So Mflanga, you can almost hear that word. And if you go down towards the beachfront, you'll see those reeds, and they're full of the little birds. And you go past that and you get to the beach, and those beaches are really where, maybe today they won't get past the, sh the ships, but where the turtles come. And I grew up here in KwaZulu-Natal. My parents did a whole bunch of cool nature photography because that was their thing. And I, as a little person, was able to go on beaches and watch turtles do their thing, lay baby turtle eggs. And I'm multitasking like crazy here. So I'm telling you why I'm excited. And I am incredibly excited. And it's important to me to connect to what's alive because this is the, the last talk before lunch on the last day of the conference. And so firstly, thanks to all the organizers. Like Everybody has been making this work. And it works like an open source conference. It's fantastic because everyone knows how to contribute, how to not get in each other's way, to stick to what they're good at. And it's amazing. The sponsors, PSF, thanks to Afrolabs. And then to all of us, right? We're here. We've done it. Another time, I think someone said 12 in a row, 13 in a row. Um, there was a wonderful tutorial. There have been talks. There may be sprints tomorrow. There will be more talks later. It's happening. And that is literally the view. So for those joining online, you're missing out. Because if you go out the door at the back, that's the view from this balcony over Umflange. The schedule was amazing. This picture is amazing. Now. This is also where we need to wake up before lunch because I want you to actually hear me. What's exciting in this picture? Can anyone spot anything that might be exciting in this picture? Hi, Airstyle. Yes, that's my daughter, Lily. And those are her braids that she loves whenever she goes on holiday. She gets braids done. Um, and she has a remote control in her hand. Something else. There's lots. I've got, I think, eight to ten bullet points that'll come up down the side. Let's spot something else interesting in the room. A robot. Yes. Little thing you over here, it's got a couple of sensor eyes, it's plugged in with a USB cable to this computer. Uh, this computer has something exciting, someone want to guess something about the computer? It's got MicroPython on it, it's controlling the robot. And this person here is very exciting, they're a mentor. He's incredibly excited, he just started out and he got to play with robots and help a lot of people to robots. Um, 
these two people over here, um, Jeremy, are doing Blender. This, this person on the left hand is showing the person on there how to do Blender for the first time that day. This person over here is a dad. It's a dad who wanted to learn Python. He's been in IT his whole life, but never learned Python. And I showed him Code Combat. And he's actually, that day, that's his first Python code typing into the terminal right there on this picture. This little girl over here is six. You'll notice there's no faces because of privacy. But you can see a bit of her. And um, she's sitting next to her dad, who's a lecturer at UWC. And both of them are learning, getting into coding. These two girls up here are learning Scratch for the first time. And there's a tutor here who wanted to learn programming. And we say, you're welcome to come along and learn to code so you can help to teach the kids. It's a fantastically exciting picture, and I'm sure I've missed something. That's Coded Dojo. I missed that. So Coded Dojo is a place where we have like a pattern, like a pattern library for helping people learn to help children into coding. Um, mentor, my daughters. This is Lily, and over here, you can't see her, is Emma. And she's making the Scratch Cat time travel on a bus at this very moment in there. And uh, as I said, maybe it will appear in the future or the past. We're not sure. So if you keep your eyes open, you might see Scratch Cat appear. Um, that dad was learning Python. There was Blender. There's MicroPython. Pi Pico is inside of that robot. There's a Pico Go robot on the desk. And it's invisible, but all of this started at PyCon ZA. I was standing in the back of a room not unlike this one. There's a little boy, his name was Sam. He was 11. His dad had managed to get him a free ticket, thanks to probably a wonderful committee member, because Sam had been learning Python but didn't know where to go next. And I said, well, can you come to my boardroom and if you have, like, on a Tuesday afternoon, if you have any problems, just come and ask me, because that's what worked for me when I was little, and he had no one to ask questions. That was the start of what's today Coded Dojo and Code Club in South Africa. 2012, I met Sam. Came back in 2018 to talk about how we'd been helping kids learn to code. In 2019, Wits and I talked about it. We proposed some sort of translations. Kim's talked about the loop of joy. Uh, and then last year, we talked about turtle translations. And the best thing about all of these is they're all available online on video, so I don't have to repeat anything in there, so I can be don't repeat yourself dry. And now here we are in 2023 with a hat tip to Afrolabs, who helps keep sponsoring this, flying me here, making these things possible for me, which is exciting. Fun facts about turtles. So Lily gives school presentation, and she loves fun facts. So I'm copying from Lily. Fun fact. They're well art. Like, I went to the WWF. I was looking for meaningful information about turtles. And it literally, they're well art. You know, turtles are hard. They've got shells. It's made of all their bones. And the thing that I'm looking at in these fun facts is there's things about turtles that are a lot like tech. Tech is also hard, right? And the software has a shell around it that we're trying to use on the inside. And it's really tough to get through that shell. And maybe we don't want to get through the shell always, because Jeremy is talking about building tools for it, or there's different APIs and ways of getting to it. And I like puns. Every picture is attributed, because there's just so much free stuff. And most of the pictures in this talk come from foundations. So if you grab the slides afterwards, grab them. Another fun fact, turtles can't climb stairs. This is quite important for this talk today. Um, if you cast your mind or your eyes to the back of this room, you'll see there are stairs, and then there's a ramp. The turtle would go up the ramp. The turtle would not go up the stairs, because only OpenAI Dolly can make that picture, because that does not exist. Turtles do not climb stairs. And that is a marine turtle at the bottom of a flight of stairs that it can't get up. That was the prompt for the prompt engineering talk. And since Kim told me this talk is somewhat like an unofficial keynote, I'm trying to tie together a few things that happened in today's conference, you may notice. But, and this is the cool thing, we can lower the floor. We can build ramps. And MIT has this wonderful course. It's free, it's open, you can take part in it called Learning Creative Learning. And in there, they talk about building learning environments with low floors and high ceilings and wide walls. If you come to PyCon, you can see there's a pretty low floor. There's people who are starting just out in the beginning. Very high ceilings. Some of the talks I will aspire to maybe one day understand. And wide walls from radio astronomy to taking care of cities to Python notebooks to everything in between, and just blows our mind, right? So Python is an example of an amazing learning environment. And the communities that we create around it are examples of amazing learning environments. But we want to smooth that transition. Another fun fact, turtles like peaches. Yes, they do. Um, I 
haven't asked one, I did not find this fact online, but I found the turtle on a beach online. I'm pretty sure turtles like beaches because beaches aren't like stairs. Beaches have a nice smooth transition out of the sea. And you can make beaches by pummeling the hard stuff as much as you can, those rocks, until they become nice soft sand and it becomes smooth. So my main call to action in all the work that we're trying to do around the education is how can we beat up those rocks to make them sand and give ourselves nice smooth transitions into doing really amazing tech. And we're all in the process of doing this every day, the way we learn, the way we teach, the way we help each other mentor out. And we'll do it for the next generation, we'll do it for ourselves. Today's talk is about how I'm doing it for myself, pretty selfishly. Another fun fact about turtles is that turtles migrate. So this here is a map of the environment that way, if that way is east. Don't tell me it's not if it's not that way. The east of the ocean, but there's also ocean there ish. I did it. Okay, there is the ocean. It's full of turtles. Well, it's less full of turtles than we would like, but there are turtles in that ocean. And there's a point here on an island that they've tracked a whole bunch of turtles that come and spread from Somalia all the way down to pretty much almost here in Durban. And then they go back to that island, right? So they return to the source. Um, like all good open source software, they go back and they see where it came from, see what they need to do, they make new turtles, they go back out into the world. Turtle, that is the tool that I'm talking about, also started out in a migratory way. It started out as a robot made by Seymour Papat, who was a South African who had got to MIT. He then made the robot, the robot became virtual, it spread around the whole world, it got into Commodore 64 computers, I used it, and uh, who in the room has a Python installed on a computer? Maybe, somewhere? Okay. So you all have Turtle installed already because Turtle is in the Python standard library. Right there alongside HTTP server and Colossus and get text is Turtle. It actually just sits there. I'm not, that's not a fake screenshot. I did not use ChatGPT for, or Dolly for that one. So it's in the standard library, which means that this Turtle package that does these things is on every continent, it's on every ocean, it's actually running on the International Space Station, and kids can run Turtle code on the International Space Station as part of AstroPy, which is astronomical. And then I checked this fact. It's even on the, used in the Mars helicopter, so Turtle's on Mars, which is pretty amazing. But there's one unfact, a unfun fact about Turtle in the Python library is you can't control robots with it, which is kind of ironic. But you can't yet control robots with it. And that's the whole point of my project that I've been working on is like, how could we use this Python turtle? After I saw how easy it was to translate into other languages, what if we were able to plug in instead of this beautiful Tickle TK interface that runs on almost every computer and everybody can use that? What if people were able to control robots? So let's simulate robots together. That amazing looking person is Seymour Papat, the South African person who ended up at MIT, made that robot in front of him, that robot in front of him made that picture in front of him. Because it was using a programming language called Logo, which is what the Turtle library in Python is based on. That's an actual robot. Uh, robots are like turtles, because of all the things we talked about earlier, about being hard and all over the place, and they are also technology. They're also hard and fiddly, like really fiddly. Especially if you try to make them yourself, which he did. Well done, man. But being hard and fiddly is not a bad thing because of the thing Kim mentioned, which is the loop of joy. So when you have an idea and then we go through that struggle, when we see it work, we get so much energy that goes back into ideation. So in the learning creative learning course, um, Mitch Resnick has this idea of a creative learning spiral. It's a slightly bigger version of this loop of joy that I talk about where that causes you to ideate and go and share it with others. But I like the tightness of this loop because now I want to come back and, and have another idea, because I saw it working. And if it's hard, and it works, like it did at 2.30 this morning, and I'm not even joking, I chose a very difficult talk challenge for me to do, and it shouldn't have taken that long, but eventually I figured out what was wrong, and what we'll see now got working then. I'm so happy, and I have closed that loop of joy. So the great loop of joy is not a bad thing. The bad thing is, that they're prohibitively expensive. So I'm in coding education in South Africa. I've been doing it for 11 years, and I've very, very little tried to push robotics because it's exclusive. Everything else we can do, we can do in a browser. 
except for the robots bits. And so some kids have had robots, and that's been exciting. And I had a drone, and the kids spun up Node.js servers, and they did things, and they controlled the drone, and that was amazing. But there were not lots of them, and so I would rather stick to things that are actually free. Robots are not free, and open source. Robots can be open source. Simulated robots just need a browser. Woohoo! Just. That horrible four-letter word, just, comes to haunt us. And really, somewhere around the beginning of this year, after I spoke a bunch about this Turtle Translated thing, I was like, we must be able to do this. Can we take Turtle, use it to automate robots? And I had this idea that with a small sim to real gap, you could take a simulated robot, run it, have a bunch of kids getting used to using robots, and then have fewer physical robots that maybe you gain access to by being good at virtual robots. That's another story, hopefully, for next year's PyCon. Today's story is to jump into this notebook. So if you have a device, it could be a smartphone. If you don't have a smartphone, well done. But if you do, try to scan that QR code. It should open. And if you have a Google account, which you almost definitely do, it's unfortunate, but most of us do. Not unfortunate. Some people would say it's unfortunate. I don't think it's such a bad thing. But a Google account will get you access to Collaboratory for free. I have been using it for the last two weeks. I've never paid a cent for it. Everything was fine until I put my computer on this lectern. It has a sensor because as I put it on the lectern, it said, um, it seems there are not enough resources to run this notebook at the moment on the free plan, but if you pay for a paid plan, we can guarantee it. So you may not get resources, but you should. So give it a shot. I've done it at least 100 times. So when you open up that notebook, We'll do a bit of a tech demo. I'm going to alt tab to it, but you should see something like this. Turtle Sim Experiment IPython Notebook. Experiment in Python with MujoCo, which is the multi-joint contact simulator to make virtual turtle bots that we can play with. So let's see if it's going to work. The runtime has disconnected. Great. So everyone will see what it looks like now. So up here, we've got the magical ability to connect to a runtime in the cloud. So this could be the it's it's a pretty badly behaving computer right now. Its fan is broken, its battery doesn't work really well, and it's very, very much better than most of the computers that kids will be able to beg, borrow, and steal and get into Coda Dojo with. But it can access the internet with the browser. Once we are now connected, I've now got a computer with RAM and disk and a GPU. I've been able to do that for free for a whole bunch of times. If you struggle right now, I'm terribly sorry, because that was not supposed to happen. I didn't even know it was possible. But Hopefully, you get the same experience. So, <clears throat> thank you. Um, it can sense things. Okay, so um, uh, Google DeepMind has a great Mujo code tutorial that I used for this. I'm just going to hop through this. Uh, you need to click that button, and then, fancily enough, stuff is on fast back, back plane internet. The things install quite quickly. It'll download and install Mujoco, NumPy, PyOpenGL, GLFW, actually getting a whole flipping GL, GPU, GFX, everything flipping working. It's just, oh my gosh. Like, I've, I've tried so many ways to get this work in other, to work in other ways that it's just, just mind blowing when it actually started to work. That, the idea that I could actually have a GPU running in a cloud in an iPy, in a, I still call it that, in a Jupyter notebook. Um, and, Mujoco, multiple joint contact. If we want to simulate robots or turtles or arms, um, there's lots of arm tutorials out there and far fewer ones that look like turtles. Understandably, robot arms are actually useful. Um, you specify in an XML file, this has an ellipsoid and an unspecified type. And for the unspecified type, it's physics, right? So everything's a sphere. So the, the standard type for everything is a sphere, and spheroid turtles weren't so exciting for me because I couldn't see which way was the front. So I added an ellipsoid so it had its face. Um, and then it's got actually useful native, well, pure Python bindings. I got the right word there, where you can get cool stuff out and you can even do things like get an iterator that you can go and speak across and get dictionaries and yay, life works in a Pythonic way. But we actually came here to see turtles. So let's see the turtles. There's a nice sphere and there's ellipsoid and they don't line up. 
Well, that's because I couldn't see them, and it's very hard to hit what you can't see. So I'm going to fix the shell, add a light, and re-render, and ah, it's a turtle. Creative license, it's a turtle. It has a fronty part, it has a shelly part, okay? Um, the comments in this are from my daughter. It's so cute, now we need to get fins. Because I was sitting next to the swimming pool while her sister was swimming because I could do this on my smartphone and I was hunting and pecking characters and typing this in at their swimming lesson and I said maybe later. Now, we came here so that we could simulate and make a video. So the real idea is that you could run any robot code, maybe your robot soccer team, and you could watch them playing soccer in a video in your little YouTube-like browser. And yeah, amazing, here's a three-second video. Okay, it's uninspiring because, well, turns out you need to add freedom, um, degrees of freedom, and we add degrees of freedom by adding joints to the bodies. And I'm doing the beach thing here with everybody and showing you how this all works, but then hopefully we smash down all the rocks and get around it that at the end of this, no one needs to know any of this if they don't want to. But you're at a Python conference, so you do. Um, so I said that we're going to give it freedom, and then my daughter said, is it going to roam around on its own? I was like, not that kind of freedom, but that's a great idea. I can proudly tell you we'll get there by the end of this tutorial. So, can we make it look a bit more like a turtle, which is a reasonable request. And then art happened, and time passed, and more time passed, um, in the style of Ron Gilbert's games. We then have a slightly larger XML specification of a turtle. Not much has changed. I added the camera, I put a ground plane in, but a lot changes when you simulate it. Look at that! It's got like physics, you can see it. And uh, I mean, it's, it's boink, it drops on the ground. And it's got reflections, and it reads, it's, that's rewarding. And all of you can do that right now on your phone. And if you're not following along, do it, because it's fucking mind-blowing. Okay? Um, and now, let's test rendering this body rolling on the floor in slow motion with a random velocity while visualing it in contact points and forces. Because it's all just there. And we, why, Dad? Because we can. We really can. We push play here. We visualize the contact frames. We tweak the scales. And this is copy-paste from someone else's work. That's from the DeepMind tutorial. So I was like, that would be really fun. What happens? Look at that. Oh my gosh. It lands on the floor. And you can see where it's pointing and how much force it's getting back from the ground. That's quite cool. Uh, OK, now let's give it some fins for stability. Yay! Wait, Dad, is this a turtle or a tortoise? Uh, we're going to call it a turtle for now. You can go and click that link and see the difference between turtle and tortoise and be disappointed as a British person that the taxonomy does not agree with what is right in the universe. But we're going to go back to those finny leg things using ellipsoids. And there's a thing called Euler that you use to rotate them. Or there's about five different ways to rotate them because maths people don't like to agree on some things. So maths is the universal language with dialects. So um, these are the uh, flip one through four being flippant uh, because puns are unavoidable. And look at that! Oh, it's so cute. I mean, it, is it not so cute? And look, he lands on his feet. No? Come back. There you are. So, we have a turtle. It has legs. It's on the floor. Uh, that is a cheat, though, because this isn't that same toss him around and see what happens thing. Uh, or her, actually. Um, I decided that this turtle will be named Beth after the little turtle on page one, because it, it is in a place I'm not going to actually go down that rabbit hole right now, or the turtle hole. Um, so what happens when we throw Beth around is randomly sometimes she ends up on her back, which is realistic, people. Turtles on their back do not work very well, so they're not going to throw them around, but it's fun, and you can throw it a bunch of times, and like random drop is part of what makes the whole internet work, right? So you can randomly drop it. Oh, that, that's a good one. Look, look, one, two, three. Ah, oh, it sticks the landing. <laughs> Look at those vectors. Straight up. Okay, so now we need to get moving. We need to get this thing to move. So we're going to put wheels on a body with joints. And this is someone else's YouTube tutorial you can follow along with. At some point, it works. At some point, it works. Um, it's separated into a model and the code because at many, many points in the last week, it has not worked. But. I am now changing the, oh wait, I can't skip over that because that's the whole important part, right? So, um, 
we put tires on a box. So there's a box, yeah, well, you can see it right in your mind's eye. Um, no, you can't, but don't worry, you'll see it soon. A left tire, which has a wheel, and the wheel is actually a, a hinge. So the wheel is the hinge that connects the tire to the larger geometry. That's the thing around which we get another degree of freedom. And then we add the actual cylindery thing to the wheel thing. And then importantly, we put in an actuator, a motor, a thing that makes movement happen. Took a lot of trying to figure out the right way to do these, but thankfully this YouTube tutorial, eventually I found it. Watch it, it's linked, and if you want to know how this stuff works, amazing. And then the diff drive car model, you can then control those two actuators. I kind of unsatisfyingly, they're just called zero and one. I would like to be able to name them, but that's not part of what I found Majoko to do. But look, there it is. <laughs> so I'm changing the drive on those two little wheels and then put them together. It goes forwards. And if you're running it on your phone, you're doing it too. And you can go up and edit those different numbers and like plus six on the right, minus six on the left. If you had one of those janky remote control cars, well, not janky, the, the more simplistic ones, like the four-wheel drive ones, where you have to push forward and forward on both to go forwards, back and back on both to go back, forward and back to turn fast. All of that works. If you put the numbers in too high, try it. The thing starts to bounce around because this is physics simulation. It's hard, it's fiddly, it's annoying. And when you get it to work, it's so nice. So this is, this is really like virtual robotics. And that, although it's like a physicist's approximation thereof, is a lot like that Pico Go you saw in the beginning that was very exciting because it has two wheels and it has a balancing point on the side. And you can control those two wheels with a differential drive and make it go somewhere. So the lessons you learn here, you can then go and drive on something else. And the control loops you want to run on here, you can run somewhere else. But now we actually need to mash up that model with that model without breaking it, which it has done a lot. It has broken a lot. And this is, this is the joy of software. Software is a, is a terrible muse. It punishes you, punishes you, and then rewards you with the most delightful moments. And I've skipped a whole bunch of in-between moments to just get to this final moment here where I put random movement into those motors so that Lily's goal, dream thing of the turtle roaming around, comes true. Um, as my data cable again disconnects. Comes back. There we go, look at that. It's a turtle with two wheels strapped onto its front legs. And the front right leg actually has a joint. So you'll see as it speeds up and goes down, that leg is waving in the breeze. But there it is. We've made a little turtle robot. And from here, we can really explore. Well, just like our turtle robot's exploring. It's going to places that I actually don't know where he's going to go because it's random. Ha! <laughs> Clever turtle robot. But we have a free roaming turtle. So what would be next be to wrap up the forwardy part in turtle.forward cells, to wrap up the lefty part in turtle.left with degrees, and to use a, a sensor plugged into it to see when he's displaced himself by enough Cartesian distance for us to call that 100 forward, and when you rotate, to see that it's done that, so that someone doing it for the first time will not be overly frustrated that they have to control motors for numbers of seconds and not know exactly when or how it's going to happen. And then they can look under the hood, return to source, and pop along. So uh, how is our timing? Cool, excellent. So that demo went according to plan. Thank you to all the millions of people, or maybe hundreds of thousands, or maybe even just thousands of people who've contributed to Jupyter Notebooks. Confession, this is the first Jupyter Notebook I've ever actually used. It was a learning curve. It's also the first time I've ever used Majoka. It was a learning curve. I'd heard about Google Lab uh, Collaboratory. I have used Python and XML before, though, so that was a big help. Um, but it just worked, and I could run someone else's code, mine, and not have to copy-paste history and stuff, and just have rerunnable things, and it's sort of like, it's almost like it's a scripted, I, I, I know I'm preaching at least a, a quarter of you are the choir that love notebooks already, and I no longer am so scared of them, and you don't need to be so scared of them either, because you can use them. So let's imagine what could be next. Here's another wonderful picture of a turtle on a beach thinking about heading back into the ocean, as we all are now, having leaving our Python conference. Uh, I see some squinting from the, this is the image provided by Savas Michelides to the European funded 
project, European Union funded project Reconnect for the Balkan Mediterranean, 2014 to 2020. But it was actually interesting to be published on Wiki Species. So for those who are having a look, there's like under the Wikimedia Foundation, there's like a whole Wiki Species thing, doing collecting of really cool stuff. And someone gave this image. Nice. Thanks, Savas. So you could <coughs> volunteer at a Coda Dojo near you, near us. So Ashley at the back. Folks, you might not have seen Ashley because it just came in today. Ashley is one of the core champion mentors at a place called Blue Roof on the Bluff. Did I get that right? Yes. They have three dojos a week at which 70 kids approximately come to each one. 70 different children to each one. It's not the same 70 coming. So it's 210 children near here. So if you come from somewhere near Durban or you know someone who does, so like get on down there. Get your boss person if you have to have one. I'm lucky I'd... Um, I've forbidden that word, but to find a way that we can exercise our freedom to get to that place and help folks like Ashley who are here going, oh my gosh, this Python thing is what, ah, gonna have to learn that at some point. Um, all the things you know already will really, really help out at a place like that. With Steve, who's gonna talk just now, and I was kind of trying to twist his arm into like, shall we start a Kodo Dojo at the makerspace that he runs? Because it'd be cool to get people into his makerspace. I'll go and talk to him, because we can start Kodo Dojos near us. Or you can head over to codelevelup.org slash volunteers needed because there are many coded dojos in South Africa, Durban, Cape Town, Free State, all the way in the north. Um, and then there are code clubs. Uh, so there are volunteering opportunities at dojos, which run at community centers, and at clubs, which are at schools. So at schools, it's like a school teacher running soccer after school. They kind of know a bit about soccer, so they can, ca they can coach soccer. And then when you come to league, you come to code a dojo. Uh, you can also do some totally amazing things. Um, totally Amazing is a tutorial pathway that's available on the Raspberry Pi project site that shows you how to use the built-in Python turtle. While doing that, just imagine you were doing that in 3D and then come back to the repo and see if you can commit to having some of that actually happen in 3D. Um, turtle Tracker takes turtle tracking data using Scratch, which is a visual programming platform for me thingy, brings it in, and you just show the path of turtles swimming around Australia. Pretty fun to do with kids. Or you can find any of the lovely pathways that the folks at Coda Dojo and Code Club working together under the Raspberry Pi Foundation banner have put together for learning Scratch, Unity, web design, Python, and physical computing. Physical computing. Get into physical computing. That's when the blinking lights are. And we, for 199 rants, I don't want to try to translate that into dollars because it's depressing. <laughs> we worked together with a pie shop in South Africa to make a tutorial kit with all those bits that you can see in that picture so that you can get through the six tutorial projects on the Raspberry Pi site in which you will make things like are in this picture. You will make a little blinking LED firefly. Um, a mood monitor, uh, a dice roller, all sorts of fun stuff with LEDs, blinking lights. There's an RGB LED in the kit. There's potentiometers. It even comes with a USB cable because there's a chance you didn't have one. That would be depressing if you didn't have one. Um, and there are many people for whom that would be a reality. You can just like click, click, ding dong and find some kit that you want to do it with because you know it's hard to do it on our own. But if there's some little person, that's fun. And then the PyCoGo robot is fun and affordable uh, if you want to get into it. And the people in this room, it's probably affordable for us. It's not affordable for the general population, unfortunately. Um, but like a big birthday present, it's about a thousand rand for the bot. And then you plug into it a PyCo, which runs MicroPython on it. So if you've started with a physical computing pathway, you're familiar with how to program the um, PyCo with MicroPython. If you started with the Scratch pathway, and then moved into physical uh, moved into Python, and then moved into physical computing, and then what do I do with a robot? You'll notice there is no robot pathway. Let's change that future. And I think one of the big things would be to change it through simulation first, so anybody could be part of the robot future. Modeling this little robot would be a fun task. Turtlebots, you saw the notebook. Many of you have already linked to the notebook. Can someone tell me if they've successfully run the notebook on the collaboratory? You've seen videos yes. in your phone thing, yes. which isn't very, well, it's quite heavily resourced compared to what we used to use in the 80s. Um, for who that ran it, was that perhaps the first time you've used Majoko? 
done physics simulations, used a Python notebook. Cool. So for those who haven't yet, literally, like, uh, could go back to the QR code. You could find it here. You can do all of that by clicking those play buttons. And then you're like, yeah, I've, I've totally, like, I went to a Python conference. I came back. I've used physics simulation. I've used Python notebooks. I've used a Google Cloud collaboratory. I've spun up an instance in the cloud. And all of that, I just want to push a little button for. Pretty, pretty fun. So I made a repository just this morning. It has that notebook in it, this readme in it. There's nothing else there yet but it has all of your pull requests in it. So um, please go there, look at it, learn, make another notebook. I think if we add a couple of notebooks and explore and see what we're trying, and hopefully I've lowered the bar enough. This notebook was pretty janky. It wasn't super amazing, all modularized. It didn't have type checking and this, it was just like a splat of code. Go put your splats of code in there and we'll figure out how we can simulate robots. If you get a physical robot, you want to put a splat of code in a folder and say, look, I was controlling a Pygo Go or, oh, I happen to have this robot that I bought seven years ago and I haven't taken it out of the box yet because uh, there's a good reason. And other people will play with it. So. Today, we have learned that I'm excited and excitable. I have told you all about why. You learned some fun facts about turtles and tech. Uh, we simulated robots together. Thank you very, very much to the people who actually did it. And I'm delighted that you got the instance that I couldn't get from this machine. And then we imagined what would be next for us to get turtle python robots. Thank you very much. Thank you, Neil. I used the word, not Neil, David. Thank no. you, David, sorry. I used the word enthusiastic and, um, what's the word, infectious when I started, and I think I was right. Your enthusiasm really comes through. I hope we've all been inspired. Um, are there any questions from the floor? No? Yes? No? Um, there was one online, or well, it wasn't a question, just uh, Jeremy had linked to the QR code, so there's a link uh -huh. in the Discord if you want to find that. Give it a try, and... I don't know, su submit that you've got it running and maybe pop one of the videos. Uh, I don't know. I'll probably be very grateful and see it and then maybe we can get together if you, you know, do something. Yeah. Really, let's, let's, let's do this stuff. It's fun. It's like a side project you can play with. Yeah. And playing is good fun. As I've, I've, many of us have been playing and while David's been talking. It's quite dangerous to say to your audience, but don't pay attention to me, play instead. But you know, well, it's, it's works. Well, they are paying attention to me. They're paying attention to my art. And there's the person <laughs> blabbing in the front while they're actually seeing the thing I made. Uh, yeah. I should probably not do that. I'm not nearly as engaging as you are, David. Um, any, further, any, any questions, anything of the sort? Or otherwise, we'll call it there. And thank you, David. That was, as always, brilliant. Cool. Thank you, everybody. We'll probably do a little turtle thing now, that way. Okay, and that's Beth, by the way, because of Meru Bethiri yeah. National Park. There we go. That's fine. Uh, the, 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 if you look on the slides, that little hatchling was released in the Meru Bethiri National Park in Luhur. And that's also from the Wikimedia Commons.